Now, there are a lot of things that false teachers do that really irk me the wrong way, and I'm sure you feel the same way. But specifically speaking, one of the things false teachers do that really frustrates me is when they pronounce and declare people saved when they aren't. I used to work with a woman who said that her pastor would always say on Sunday mornings in church, well, we're all Christians, aren't we? We're all in church. As to imply what? What was he implying by saying that? That because we all profess faith in Christ and are in church on Sunday morning, that what? That we're all true Christians? That's exactly what he was implying. See, these false teachers will be judged for the false assurance that they hand out to people so flippantly. And I remember uh, my grandmother, I remember she getting upset with me because, and this is a woman who's been going to church longer than I've been alive, when I basically told her that she was lost and needed Christ. And her crutch was her was basically her church attendance. That's pretty much what she holds on to, the fact that every Sunday she's there, okay? Um, and her pastor does exactly what I just mentioned. Has my grandmother believing that because she has a good church attendance record, okay? Literally, he prides himself on making that a point that as long as you show up, okay, you're right with God. That's literally his point, okay? Now, starting next week, I want to do a small series on how we can know that we possess a true testimony and how we can truly know that we are really saved. And, and this needs to be talked about because a lot of people, now, especially with reading a lot of your emails, a lot of you guys really don't or can't quite grasp what you need to know in order to know what you need to know. So I will be doing a small series on two things, okay? How you can know that you possess a true testimony and how you can know that you are truly saved. Well, people have been talking for a while about the center of Christianity moving to the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, places like Africa and Southeast Asia. And mainly they're talking about the numbers of people who are reported as coming to faith. There's two issues with that though. There's two reasons I disagree that the center of gravity has shifted to the global south. Number one, because the overwhelming majority of those conversions are false. If you go to Southeast Asia, if you go to Sub-Saharan Africa, you will find a weak syncretistic Christianity and false conversions everywhere. Not everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> right? And so you hear all these stories, oh, people come into faith, oh, Africa, oh, China, oh, Saudi Arabia, and then you go there and you find weak syncretistic churches. In some places you go, you will find some pockets of strength, but here's what you won't find. You won't find publishing and you won't find seminaries which means that those individuals who are being raised up in those places are generally having to go elsewhere to be trained and a lot of them aren't coming back. So if there's going to be that massive shift, there will be publishing houses, seminaries, great churches and teachers of the faith. And then you will see a massive shift.